Alright guys, so here's a video about my current computer. This is a 16-bit computer. It has 128 kilobytes of RAM, 8 kilobytes of EEPROM storage where you could write subroutines and programs in, so it's st sort of like an SSD. I have a 16-bit program counter right here. I have a 16-bit index register used for getting values out of an array. Um, here I have a 16-bit memory address register. Uh, this board right here is a 16-bit ALU. I'm using four 74 LS181s. And the inputs to this ALU are coming from two 16-bit registers. And this ALU could do 32 mathematical functions, including Boolean functions. Okay, coming here, I have Ben Eater's video card, which I have upgraded to have its own separate VRAM. So it has its own VRAM separate from the rest of the processor. So this is VRAM. Uh, I also included two times the pixel density and also I'm running the CPU, the processor, at the same time as the video card. So they're going to be running at the same time. There's not going to be any uh, video time separated from the processor time. They're going to be running at the same time. And this board right here is a logic that lets the, C the CPU talk into the video card. And it's just a series of multiplexers. Uh, this board right here is for comparisons, so it could compare if equal, compare if greater, compare if less than, and compare if <coughs> greater than. So equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than. This board could do that. And the flags register is also here. Now moving on to this board right here, this is where instruction decoding happens. Okay, so we have instruction decoding and I have the control ROMs, so I have 32 individual control signals and these control ROMs I have 7 bit opcodes going into these ROMs and 4 bit microstates going into these control ROMs this means I could have 128 instructions and each having 16 microstates okay also I have a board that I'm working on currently this is a 16 bit stack pointer and the stack pointer is given its own memory uh, the thing is that these memory chips are only 32 kilobyte words, so I'm only going to be using 15 bits from this counter and feed that into the addresses of the stack pointer. So the stack pointer, the way I'm micro sequencing the, how the stack is going to work, will let me use uh, nested subroutines. So I could have a subroutine within a subroutine within a subroutine 32,000 times deep, and they will all jump back properly in the correct order, and that is because of how I'm, uh, that is because of how I designed the microstates, so it supports nested subroutines. Also, I'm working on this board right here. This board right here is just a shift register used for a PS2 keyboard, and it generates an interrupt. And I'm also trying to work on how I'm going to uh, handle interrupts. So the way that I'm thinking about handling interrupts is having an interrupt signal which is generated from the board I just showed you so it generates an interrupt signal I send that signal through an AND gate and this AND gate will have an input coming from a signal from the control unit that says an instruction is done executing so if those two conditions are met an interrupt is triggered and an instruction has just finished executing those are going to feed into an AND gate and the AND gate's output is going to disable the control ROM so entire control ROM is going to get disabled okay and it's going to enable a different ROM uh, uh, I'm going to name this one the interrupt control ROM it's going to enable, enable that control ROM it's also going to disconnect the clock from the micro state counter so if the clock is disconnected from the micro state counter that means there is no fetch decode execute happening anymore I'm going to let the clock start uh, hitting a microstate counter for the control ROM, the control handling ROM. Okay, so this is going to be a separate board, and the control handling ROM is now going to take full control of the processor. So what's going to happen first? All registers are going to be pushed onto the stack. All. Okay, so we're going to push the program counter. We're going to push the flags register. We're going to push the two uh, general purpose registers in the ALU. We're also going to push the two general purpose registers and the comparator. Maybe some other, um, maybe some other uh, registers I also need to push, like the maybe the memory address register, depending on how I 
continue to develop my instruction set because it's not fully done yet. Oh, I also need to push the index register also. So, um, there's going to be a VRAM memory address register. Maybe I might have to push that. There's going to be a color address. Uh, there's going to be a color register for writing colors into the VRAM. Maybe I might have to push that. I still need to develop these ideas. Okay. Uh, what else am I, I going to add? So I have this board here. I kind of took out some of the chips because I needed them for the stack pointer, but I have more of the chips that I need. So this board right here generates sound. So I'm going to try to make it so that you could have 256 different notes and this is a programmable sound generator so you could program in the tone of which the notes are going to be referenced from so that gives it more levels of freedom so more different types of sounds so you have eight notes maybe I'll add three bits for different types of tones maybe I'll have one for a square wave a triangle wave sine wave and then okay maybe I'll have more um, five types of square waves, different pulse widths, modulated type of things, and then maybe I'll have a sine wave and I'll have a triangle wave. So, not that I'm planning on this board. And that is basically it. Once I, all these random wires that you see here, they're all gonna eventually get connected into the control room when I'm finished the instruction set. I still need to do a bit of designing for how instructions are going to be decoded because I don't only want to use the current microstate and the opcode to decode my instructions. I want to use, because this is a 16-bit processor, so I have a 16-bit word. So 7 bits are going to be used for the opcode. That leaves me with 9 more bits that I could use to decode instructions. And what I'm deciding is that, so we have our 7 bits, then the next 3 bits are going to be for source register 1. The next three bits are going to be for source register 2. And then the last three bits, that's going to be for destination register. Okay, so there's going to be different instruction formats for sure. But for all the loads and stores having to do with the ALU and the comparator, I'm going to have just one, one signal from the control unit, and that's going to be demultiplexed. And the address of the demultiplexer is coming from the field that I just explained, the three bit fields. So this is what's going to truly uh, have the signal fed through the correct component based on the field. Okay, that's cool. What else uh, do I have to add? So I, I think I'm going to add, I'm going to make combinational logic or I'll just use an EEPROM for the ALU because I don't, I don't think I need all 32 of the operations the ALU provides. Some of them are pretty, I don't know, pretty useless I guess. They're not useless but I don't see myself really using them. I see I, fo I found 16 of the most in important uh, instructions. These include addition, subtraction, increment, decrement, logical and, logical or, logical xor, logical not, and let's see. There's a left shift. What else is there? There's like a like full zeros, full ones, and how many do I have left? I have five left. So I could. Go through the data sheet of the 74181 and pick five more. Okay, that's cool. What else do I need to add? I need to connect the carry flag from the output of the, the ALU into the flags register. Okay, what else? Is, I need to figure out how I'm going to map the memory because this memory is 128 kilobytes, right? Uh, 120 kilobytes of RAM, but I only have 64K addressability, okay? So I could add a, a mapping bit and an instruction that has to do with mapping. Maybe I could have uh, one set of 64 just dedicated to variables and the other 64 just dedicated to programs. I think that's a good idea. So you could technically use the 64K of memory as registers, right? I'm thinking of doing that. I think that's a good idea. Um, what else could I add? I think that's basically it. That's a good overview of this entire processor. So I still have a lot, to work to, uh, a lot of work to do. I uh, plan on finishing before 2021, hopefully, so I could finish all this within maybe three more weeks. I hope that's a good time frame. This is the bottom. So it's all soldered together. A lot of people ask me, why don't you just design a PCB? Or well, why, why are you doing it like this? The point, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because it's more fun to build it by hand. It's just way more crazier to build it by hand. 
I think designing a PCB and then soldering the parts is boring. I want there to be problems so I could debug. I enjoy debugging circuits. And there was a lot of problems that I had to go through so far and it was really enjoyable. Okay, this is my hobby. There's, there's no, this is not related to school. I'm in my first year of engineering and this is what I've been doing for five years. I just like digital electronics and building circuits. That is all.